Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive, the series in which me and Zen have dedicated ourselves to watching through all of Shonen Jump animes, starting with Gintama and then adding in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. We're here to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. I'm Woki and I'm here with Zen. Hello. Hello. Are you ready, Zen, to get your game on? Funny enough, a little bit things, I interrupted you before you could even answer, but it's okay. But speaking of getting your game on... <laughs> Um, when I was editing the video last week, um, you can, funny enough, I was able to use the Japanese theme, hallelujah, but when I tried to use the English theme, get your game on, some dudes from Spanish are like, we share, uh, we share the money made on this video, right? Because this is our song. And I was like, with the balls on these random Spanish dudes who are like, actually, we own uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX theme. I'm like, you don't own shit <laughs> if you're willing to share That's the profits. That's fucking amazing. I was like, all right, I'm just going to stick with the Japanese theme because apparently the Japanese theme don't care as long as I use this specific bit of it and it's fine um, until it just stops becoming fine. But for now, it's fine. But I was, I had a laugh at that. I was like, it's not even Konami. It's like some random Spanish dudes are like, uh, this is our song we share. Okay, cool. And I'm like, no, and I took down the video. No, and not at all. <laughs> uploaded a new one. So if you were wondering, hey, how come there's no getting your game on? That's the reason why. Until I <laughs> work this shit out with the Spanish dudes. Just enjoy the sounds of Hallelujah. All right, so Hallelujah is a really good song, so it's okay. It is a really damn good. Uh, get on the deck. I'm on the deck, everyone, and we're on the deck. To talk about <laughs> we are on the deck right now. Last episode, we talked about episodes 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6, and we're today's episode, we're going to be talking about 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, because 11 is technically a two-parter with episode 10, so it only makes sense to talk about both of them. Don't want to leave it on a cliffhanger, especially because the cliffhanger for that would have been like, uh, they play a card, and we'll see what card that was next week, <laughs> so it's just easier to talk about it now. All right, Zen, you ready? I am ready. All right, let's talk about episode seven. Show's Vehicleroid deck is the name of the episode. Yeah, so they get in trouble for going to the abandoned dorm, um, which they're not supposed to do. And so uh, they get like a a punishment where they have to do a tag duel with uh, Judai and Cyrus on the same team, Judai and Show, and it's going to be against people that. Um, Kronos picks. And so both both Chumley and uh, Asuka, because I don't remember Chumley's Japanese name. It is Hayato. Um, I wrote it down. Hayato. I, that's I what started it is. to respect Hayato as the episodes went on. Um, that's why we they got were, his were Japanese both like, name. why don't you let me duel instead of show? Because he's going to lose. Yes, um, they're right. Yeah. So they... Uh, they have like a practice duel between him and Judai to like help Sho get his confidence up, and there's a a flashback of him like being too nice to beat a bully because um or no he he he's gonna beat the bully with power bond but then he didn't like plan ahead for the trap card so power bond was gonna lose him the duel yeah and so uh his brother Rio was like. You can't use that card. You're not good enough to use that card. And then He's going right. back to the uh, duel in the present against Junai, uh, Sho like has a PTSD moment when he draws Power Bond <laughs> and he doesn't use it, and it uh, causes him to lose because his monster was not strong enough because of polymerization. Um, and then. Judai is like, what the fuck is wrong with him? Why is he having dramatic episodes? And Asuka's like, oh, his brother is the best duelist in the whole school. And so Judai says, okay, I'm going to go duel his brother then to shake him out of this funk. And that's where it ends, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, very simple. I uh, Here's some notes that I have here. They are back at the lighthouse at the beginning with, because in the beginning they do with bit with uh, Asuka and Ryo. And I put here, they're back at the lighthouse where Kronos meets the Phantom Duelist, and they're just kind of hanging out. I think this it's implied that Asuka shows up there to talk to Ryo about, because Ryo knows that he's looking for 
her brother that she's looking for her brother so he just kind of hangs out actually that's the reason they talk to each other the reason why he hangs out at the lighthouse i have no idea (laughs) he seems to just kind of find the lighthouse very comforting (laughs) because he's always there Uh, yeah that's just like that's his hangout place yeah and they have this line where he's like where it's like ah yes darkness has set down and he goes, yes, but the sun always rises. I think that's what Oscar says. And I immediately stopped the episode and went, wait a minute. And I went back to look at what Tristan says, which is in another few hours, the sun will rise. <laughs> Very similar. <laughs> I really do like when uh, the immediate reaction of everyone isn't that, oh, no, they're in a tag duel to um, – uh, and we need to step up and, you know, take responsibility, which is what they want to do, which is why both uh, Hayato and Asuka go up. Because Hay- Hayato first saying, like, it's not fair. I was there, too. Let me duel instead of show. And then Asuka says, he's right. I was there, too. Let me duel instead. And the principal's just like, nah. I forget his reasoning, but his reasoning is basically no. It's, uh, th- it's basically like, eh, it's already started. We can't change it now. So good yeah, luck. It's, it's too late to change. Um, this is great because it's later revealed that Hayato has not worked on his deck at all. Uh, he actually yeah, says literally he at all, but nev- he was not. still like, I'm still better than Sho. Yes. Which really shows how bad Sho is. <laughs> and I kind of agree with him. Sho really is shit at doing. Yeah, but he's I, bad. He's very bad, but I literally liked, uh, Hayato kind of explaining which the thing I had picked up on, which was the thing was because he was basically laying about not doing anything. And then once he saw Jade and Duel, he started actually doing stuff again. He actually started moving around and talking to them and being friends with them. And he explains, like, specifically, watching him duel makes me, like, motivated. It gives me motivation I did not previously have, and I want to continue that. And I basically, my way of saying thanks would be, like, being there in the tag duel for him. Because he needs... I don't want him to be expelled, is basically the idea about it. And Asuka's basically saying the same thing. Um, Of course, they get denied... When they're doing the duel with Sho, they show why Sho is so bad is that he gets overconfident, which is the same thing when he's a kid. Because when he's a kid, he's like, and I'm also, I'm going to put this out right here. I think Sho sucks. I hope he gets better eventually. <laughs> but my initial notes here are, Sho sucks, Chumley good. <laughs> because Sho ass. Chumley Shou, yeah, sick. He's so, he's, he's so terrible because his basic thing is that he gets overconfident. And when he's a kid and he's dueling the bully, I also don't believe his version of events because he acts like such a shithead. I'm like, maybe the bully had a point if this is the way you're acting. <laughs> Show is making me pro bully. Yeah, so I'm like, whatever. That kid deserved the bully based off his actions here. <laughs> um, because he's like, ha, you're, he's basically talking like an anime villain, like whatever loser, prepare to get owned. <laughs> he's basically talking like that. Where he's super confident in himself before Rio shows up and he's like, you fool, he had spellbinding circle. I think he tells the kid, take this card and pretend like this duel never happened. And the kid goes, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the kid's like, all right. And he doesn't really even talk shit to Sho. He just kind of goes, okay. And he moves on with his life. So it really makes me feel like Sho, <laughs> Sho was in the wrong year. And I don't, he's an unreliable. Sho is the problem. <laughs> yeah, Sho is the problem right now. An unreliable narrator, Sho. He's like the guy in Fight Club. I don't trust him. <laughs> I don't trust Sho. <laughs> but anyway, when he's being overconfident against Judai, it shows him that he's going to play Patroid and he's going to attack. And then this amazing animation of Patroid rocking the shit out of Avion Show is played. <laughs> Where he's, like, punching him with his wheel arm, and it's super detailed as he's punching Avion. Um, and around this point, I think it's actually in a later episode. I think, uh, no, because it happens again against Steam Dryroid, where Avion gets destroyed by Steam Dryroid a little bit later on, that I've started to take account to how many times Avion gets rocked per episode, and how many times Avion rocks back, basically. So the current counter here for this episode, for these batch of episodes that we're doing, and I'll keep track from the future ones, so don't worry, it will go up, is two times in this episode, one in a dream where he pictures Patroid destroying Avion with his 200 more attack, and then actu- in actuality when he uses Steam Driveroid to destroy Avion, but Avion also gets to attack directly, so he rocks show. So currently the, 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 the meters are is at 2 to 1 right now, as far as this episode goes. Um... 
A thing I actually liked, which is funny because if you don't know this, in the OCG, Pot of Greed has text that says destroy this card. Um, so anytime they use it in the anime, Pot of Greed gets destroyed. And for the first time, they use Pot of Greed and show explains, this is a card that lets me draw two cards and then it destroys itself. And they have an animation of the Pot of Greed exploding, which is really yeah, funny. Yeah, exploding. <laughs> yeah, it like evis- eviscerates. <laughs> Um, Thunder Giant also gets to show up here, and Thunder Giant has, like, the coolest intro of any of his elemental heroes, because Avion's cool, because, not Avion, um, uh, Flame Wingman is cool, because he kind of gets, he usually gets put with Skyscraper, and he descends from up high, but Thunder Giant, like, comes down like a god. Yeah, I fucking love Thunder Giant. Thunder Giant's Thunder Giant, so good. Such a cool animation, and he rocks so hard. He, it's it's an intro that is that rocks too hard for a twenty four hundred beat stick that lets you discard one card, and then you destroy a card with less attack than twenty four hundred, which is basically useless. Um, which is funny because isn't Thunder Giant's effect one in of would still have worked if Sho had used Power Bond? So no matter what, he was losing, right? Because Thunder Giant can't destroy unless it's original attack. Yeah, they, Thunder Giant is original attack, so it still would have worked. Yeah, it's it, so really they're they they. This is the one point I'll give the show. They specifically say you should have used Power Bond, you would have been stronger. And my retort is, it wouldn't have mattered regardless. He lost. <laughs> there was no way. Would he have had to... enough damage on the board to kill? N- no, Judai? because Judai had full four thousand. And Steam Gyroid would have had... He attacked Avion, which is 1,000. So unless his attack was 5,000-something, he wouldn't have had enough to destroy. And I think Steam Gyroid has 2,200 attack. So at most, he would have been able to deal 3,000-something damage. And then he would have taken 2,200 damage. And then he would have lost next turn regardless. So I feel at that point, it's like... Either they should have had it so that... um, Judai took a thousand damage beforehand somehow, or he paid a thousand, so it would have made sense that he would have lost that turn if he had done it. Otherwise, they're just kind of like it's kind of that shitty thing of like you played bad. It's like, well, what would have changed if I had done that? Nothing. <laughs> you still would have lost, but it would have been a slightly better move, I guess. <laughs> if the, if the yeah, if well, the- like uh, this is also the one that I was talking about last time, where like he attacks into a trap card that's like not even that big of a deal. I think it's negate attack. It is negative. And they're like, you fucking suck. (laughs) Yeah. They're like, you could have checked it with Patroid. And then I think I had that same logic. Well, it's like, I would have attacked regardless. Yeah, like, yeah, he could have checked it with Patroid, but also what difference would it have made? Yeah. Because my logic would be, no one is stupid enough to use a negate attack to defend a 1,000 attack (laughs) avion. Also, even if... He uses negate attack, so fucking what? The only other alternative is not attacking, which is the exact same result as getting hit by negate attack. Yes, and he didn't have Mystical Space Typhoon or anything. Yeah, so, so really, there was no other there was no option. Yeah, so I feel like they could have maybe done a little bit planning better of the duel. <laughs> maybe that's asking a little bit too much for them to be like, maybe you could have set it up. Because I think it's actually kind of a bad thing for kids to look at that. It goes like, oh, maybe if he had done that, it would have been different. But the answer is no. If you actually thought about it, no matter what, he was losing. There was no way for him to win this game. <laughs> yeah, there's like, a lot of shit like that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the, end of, the episode ended up being a good piece of build up for future ones. Uh, but other than making me hate show and making me really like Hayato, aka Chumley, I think this episode did a very bad job of trying to make show sympathetic. <laughs> because I ended yeah. up, doing, I ended up being on the side of everyone else but him. <laughs> <laughs> anti show task force. Yes, the one hundred. I'm on the anti show agenda currently until he improves. <laughs> I really hope he improves because I don't remember Cyrus being this shitty. But maybe if I go back and look at it, it turns out he's always been this way. And I think I even had a small uh, debate saying to my bro, where my brother Nux, where I said, like, I think I think Cyrus sucks. He's like, well, he's, yeah, he does in the beginning, and then he gets better, and he gets to, to raw yellow eventually. I'm like, yeah, but he, as a person, he, he's terrible. <laughs> <Like, laughs> yeah, I, I don't mean as a duelist. I mean as a man. Yes, as a man. And then he said, he has, <laughs> he, then he said, he has psychroid. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> you have a point there. He does a, the vehicle roids. I like the vehicle roids, but they are maybe one of the shittiest archetypes in the world. Oh, they're so bad. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I want to know the backstory for why he has that deck. Cause everyone like in GX has like a special reason why they use their deck. And I'm, yeah. I'm like, I want to know what drew show to the fucking psychroids. 
and the, the, the vehicle rights. The vehicle rights. And here's the crazy thing. He was using them when he was getting bullied. Maybe that's the reason he was getting bullied, because it's like, yo, you're using the fucking vehicle rights. <laughs> Yo, this... it's just like you use the vehicle as you fucking nerd. Yo, this guy's got fucking drill roid. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Hit me with bicycle roid? <laughs> Loser. <laughs> Failure. That's so fucking funny to think about. They're all just like, what a dweeb. <laughs> what a dweeb. What are you gonna hit me with? <laughs> using the fucking, fucking vehicle roids. <laughs> you gonna hit me with your bicycle? Hit me with your 800 attack shit bicycle? <laughs> So I, I really hope if there's no backstory, I'm gonna say right now that the vehicle roids are <laughs> the reason why Show got bullied as a kid. Because I would have bullied him for using the vehicle roids, <laughs> even though I like in real life I like them. But in the this uh you world where all everyone cares about is dueling, I would have to disrespect vehicle roids. <laughs> but to be fair, I also feel like I would be a villain who would be like, whatever. The elements of heroes suck. What the fuck are you gonna do? Summon Avion in attack mode? <laughs> And then he would summon Avion in attack mode and fucking beat me. <laughs> it's the ultimate sign. But yeah, that was episode 7 for me. Um, fun to talk about, but in terms of what I thought it would be a vehicle for show, I think it's actually terrible for that. Uh, how do you feel about it, Zen? It's okay. Uh, I think it's funny when they shit on show for like <laughs> stuff that he wouldn't have done differently anyway. That's like not a big deal. You no, know, you gotta uh, <laughs> It is very funny. Yeah, it's really funny when that happens. Because uh, it happens a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was okay. Yeah. Oh, d- I by the way, much did you... prefer um, the next episode. Yeah, the next episode is much better and kind of sets this one up, which is why I probably won't give it a full on. It was full shit. But here's another thing that I thought was actually pretty funny, which is really showing of the animation style at the time. Did you notice when uh, As- Asuka, they, in the beginning, when they show at the lighthouse, there's an animation of her head moving up and down that is very clearly that they didn't animate a walk cycle. They just put the, p- the picture up and down. <laughs> No, but that's so funny. Yeah, it's very clearly like they put it up and down, and then she has a walk cycle that is clearly reused a walk cycle, and I thought she looked like Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. <laughs> <laughs> Which, it was, that was the, the, I put it here, Adult Swim style animation. If you look back there, you, you can't unsee it the way it looks like. It looks like that. It, it's just, very cool. like, bounces up and down? Yeah, she bounces up and down, and then her walk cycle is on a loop. So it means that basically what it means is that she was too far away from Rio. So they had to animate this super long walk for her to go there. But it's actually super expensive to do that legitimately. So what they did is that they just created this like walk thing. But it's very clearly that she's just like using the reusing the same animation over and over again and walking for a decent amount of time. It's I think at overall it's like five seconds. But if you can check that out, you'll see what I'm talking about. I worked in and studied animation. I didn't work in. I studied animation in school, so I always pick up on that style stuff, and I thought that was really funny. <laughs> I thought that was really good. But, yeah, episode 7. And that was the only, like, note I have about the animation. I just thought it looked really funny in that one bit. Don't take it too serious, but it is funny for a look at it and go like, haha, <laughs> good moment. So Yeah, it is funny. <laughs> episode 8, Zen. The strongest cyber end dragon. Tell us about it. Yeah, so... Judai makes good on his promise. He keeps trying to figure out a way to duel Zane, uh, which is, like, tough to do because he's, like, the man, the big man on campus. Um, he has to write a letter of dueling, right? Yeah, like a fills out a form. <laughs> and I think Kronos won't let him, right? Yeah, he's basically saying, like, oh, mamma mia, you can't be doing that. Yeah, he's like, he's too good for you. He do um, too good. You can no fight him. Gorgon's and yeah, he won't teams. let him. Uh-huh. And then Sho is having like a fucking breakdown about how uh, he's going to get Judai expelled because mm-hmm. he's going to lose. Uh, I think he does he have like a nightmare scenario of seeing um, of seeing uh, Rio as one of their opponents to get them expelled? Yes, he does. Yeah. Um, and so then he's like, uh, oh yeah, Judai finds Hayato, and Hayato's like, I can't take my desk koala out of my deck, because that's my bro. <laughs> he's working on his and deck so, in a tree. 
Yeah. And so then Jaden decides he's going to go and just challenge Zane directly. So he goes to the Obelisk Blue Dorm, but he can't get in. Um, so he leaves and he goes back to his dorm and he finds the thing from Cyrus saying that he's just leaving forever. He's just going to see. Um, and Wing Karibo goes to help him save him. Uh, what Cyrus is like in a raft yeah, <laughs> out in the raft. fucking water. Yeah, and Judai gets on the raft, and then Cyrus uh, falls in the water, and he's like, oh my god, I can't swim, I'm gonna die, and then it turns out it's like knee-deep water. Yeah, Hayato goes in there to, um, to save both of them, and he's like, this is knee-deep. Yeah, this is like not deep water. And then uh, uh, Asuka and Kaiser show up, and uh, Kaiser's like, oh, are you finally giving up on these stupid dreams? And Judai's like, fuck you, duel me. Um, <laughs> And they do, and uh, Judai does a big ass turn with uh, Thunder Dragon when they do the joke about how Kaiser's too good to react to the holograms, yeah. like he doesn't play up like he got hurt. No, it's actually um, really funny because he gets hit, and then there's like a <laughs> like a very tiny like it's a very clear like he's not reacting, and then they do the ding ding ding, and he takes the the life point hit for that. It's yeah, but good. then uh, Kaiser sets up Cyber End Dragon and he power bonds it out and attacks over Mudball Man with an 8,000 attack Cyber End Dragon, which has defense piercing and it nukes Jaden's Mudball Man and him in one hit. And it's really funny that he used Mudball Man because Mudball Man fucking blows. He does. Mudball Man's actively terrible. They basically, he's a jobber elemental hero. <laughs> Pretty much. He he's like, I have Bubble Man in my hand and I have Clay Man in my hand. Uh instead of just putting Bubble Man in attack mode, which would actively kill him regardless of anything, they said, Well, I'm gonna make Mudball Man. So they had to make Mudball Man, because otherwise Bubble Man would have cost him the game. So pretty funny. Mudball Man. And yeah, yeah, but then Kaiser's actually like, oh, you're actually kind of good at this. Uh, good job. I like you. Yeah. And Jane's like, I like you too. And Sho's like, this did not help me at all. <laughs> now you're just friends with my brother that hates me. I think the le- the lesson that he assumes he's supposed to learn is that regardless of winning or losing, as long as you're having fun, then it's fine. Which is really funny because it seems like Rio's trying to teach show without ever saying a single word <laughs> this man refuses to help his brother <laughs> directly he will only give him like the most like cookie <laughs> fortune cookie style advice by not saying anything he's like that joke of the the lady of the the girlfriend who gets angry at you for d- doing something that not picking up her vibes about what she wants from you <laughs> yeah not picking up the proper vibe he's yeah not picking up the vibe at all of what he's supposed <laughs> to be doing He's like, he's like, please, brother, help me. And he's like, I guess you're gonna quit again, huh? <laughs> get off of Dual Island, if that's what he yeah, wants. Yeah, get off he, of my island. Get off of Dual Island. If he can't hang here, then I guess he can't hang. And then that's when Judai goes down for him. And then it also, uh, it also ends with them realizing they're hungry and they're like, let's go eat some food. And they all like, yeah. And they all run off all happy friends like style. Um. So this episode, here's my first note after Hayato is working on his deck and he believes in himself again. Show is a fucking power. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the beginning part here of Hayato working on his deck is really funny when you... <laughs> Hayato working on his deck in a tree because the ultimate koala theme is really funny. It really accentuates the point of like, even with not working on his deck for an entire year. He is still a better duelist than show. This man has not picked up a dual disc in a year. He has not moved in a year. He has not done anything in a year and he would still be a better partner to Judai than he would be with show, which is really funny. And I did like the, I also really like Desquala back in the day. I used to use Desquala. So maybe that's also why I really like Hyatt. Is that we actually share a common bond through uh, Death Koala. Death Koala. Yeah. 
the desk koala fa- actually broke in and which I'll get into when we get to his episode which is next about how desk koala in the Yu-Gi-Oh GX world is probably the most broken card in the entire game if you pay attention to the way they play the game um I like that Kaiser is still at the lighthouse for some reason <laughs> He never moved from the lighthouse. They could just always find him at the lighthouse chilling no matter what. Uh, for two episodes in a row, Judai has opened up with uh, Avion in attack mode, set one back row. <laughs> he did it the previous episode, he does it this episode. The difference is, is that I guess this is actually a good uh, good thing because it actually shows the differences between Sho and uh, Kaiser. Is that Kaiser does the smart thing, or the good move I guess, which is he special summons... Um, Cyber Dragon, and then he activates Mystical Space Typhoon, and then he just fucking obliterates Avion, which puts us up to the Avion rock counter to three. He gets burned to fucking death. It's terrifying and gruesome how messed up they get Avion in this one. Um, but other than that, and then also later on in the duel, there's another thing that I remember from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX because it always bothered me as a kid. Jaden, uh, Judai's continuous illegal activation of Bubble Man's effect. I don't think he understands how Bubble Man is supposed to work. So in the actual game, Bubble Man's effect is if you have no cards on the field and he is the only card in your hand, special summon him and then draw two cards. The way he uses him yes. is that special is summon Bubble Man. And if you have no cards on the field, draw two cards, which if that was Bubble Man's actual effect he would be limited. He would not be limited. He'd be banned. Because there's no way in hell that effect... The idea of, like, turn one, your most of people's starting move would be, I play Bubble Man in attack mode, link him away, and then draw two cards. Because <laughs> I have yep. no cards on my field. That, that would be almost every single deck's starting move, because the ability to draw two cards is too good. And it's always bothered me how uh, Bubble Man is used in the anime, because Bubble Man is always made to look like he's so amazing in the anime when actuality Bubble Man is so terrible. Oh man fucking sucks. Yeah. He's he's god awful. I make fun of Avion, but Bubble Man might actually legitimately be the worst elemental hero when you think about it. Because he also Well they has... like to make Bubble Man seem like he has value of some kind and he yes. absolutely doesn't. No, because if you actually also think about what are the fusions of Bubble Man that stand out? Because at least Avion has Flame Wingman, and Sparkman and Clayman have uh, Thunder Giant and stuff like that. They have a lot of cool fusions. What are the fusions of Bubble Man that you can name off the top of your dome right now? Uh, Mariner, Steam Healer, and Mud Bubble Man. All of them jobbers. <laughs> all of them not yeah, good. Yeah, they all suck. They all which, are fucking terrible. Which the um, Steam version is uh, Wingman, but you gain life points, but he's weaker than Wingman. <laughs> I think he's an 18 attack monster. So Bubble Man, I got a personal vendetta against Bubble Man. But other than that, I thought this episode uh, was really good. It was a very entertaining duel. They really showed uh, Ryo being fucking amazing at the game. He basically played like an actual legitimate Yu-Gi-Oh player. Because every move he did was, um, so back in the day, Cyber Dragon was probably one of the best decks because it could OTK, and the idea was to use Power Bond and then Limiter Removal, and to get yourself a 16,000 hit beat stick, and basically you win anything unless your opponent uses something to counteract it in some way. But it was very hard to do that, because it basically has piercing, there was no real way of stopping it. Um, and the only difference is that he doesn't use uh, Cyberstein. He actually legitimately fusion summons it. So it shows that he's absolutely the best duelist in the entire uh, island, no hands down. Like, even though uh, Judai has beaten a obelisk, two obelisk blues at this point, the actual top heap of obelisk blue, he doesn't really stand a chance against, at least currently, in his current form. Because there was, like, no way for him to really win this fight at all. Like it, like yeah, look- it's it puts Chaz's bragging in retrospect when he's like, "No one in Obelisk Blue can beat me," and you're like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah, no." <laughs> Guys, there's absolutely shit stopping people. He, yeah, one hundred percent, Rio would absolutely destroy him, and he would destroy a, actually a vast majority of people because he's just that damn good, and they do a great job of actually establishing him. And I also really liked it that uh, the protagonist loses in this one, and they actually show that like 
it's not that big a deal if you're having fun with it and there's no real stakes <laughs> because the previous stakes are that he has to fight are legitimate and he shouldn't lose that because he doesn't want to get expelled. But in terms of an actual dueling environment, there's nothing wrong with losing if you had fun with the game itself. So I thought that was a pretty good message. And I'll actually, even though as much as I have so many anti-show notes <laughs> throughout the entirety of these episodes. <laughs> as much as we fucking hate show. Yeah. I actually really did like it at the end when they're all three together and they were actually having like a slice of life good time. Like, oh yeah, let's go get some food. Like I was like the slice of life aspect of the show where I was like, oh yeah, go get that food, man. Get those food, play cards. Who wouldn't want to fucking live this life? <laughs> it seems awesome. <laughs> I would gladly live this life, even if I'm living in some shit shack. <laughs> Only get feed the fed sardines. I don't care. <laughs> It'd be pretty. Don't cool. give a shit. No, because he's got some pretty cool roommates. He's got all the things that you would need. So, oh, yeah, good episode. I liked it. What do you feel? Yeah, really good episode. This is one of my favorite duels in uh, the entire the entirety of the season. Is uh, Jedi versus Kaiser really fucking cool? Um, I like Kaiser a lot as a character, like just in general. I think mm -hmm. he's really cool. Um, I love Cyber Dragons. They're one of my favorite archetypes of yeah, dueling Dragons in general. Fucking awesome. Yeah, so I'm a huge fan of this episode. This is like my fan service episode, Heroes and Cyber Dragons. <laughs> really, it is kind of. Now that you put it that way, it is. And now let's talk about my fan service episode, episode nine, <laughs> featuring the koalas <laughs> and the Australia deck. <laughs> single straight yeah. kill flipping the table episode 9 <laughs> tell us what it's about Zen yeah this one's fucking ridiculous um, <laughs> it is it's fucking insane so <laughs> episode 9 is uh, Hayato versus his father because his father's like dude you fucking suck at dueling so you're gonna come back and you're going to work in the family business uh, which I believe is sake, right? It is, yeah. So, do you know what the edited version is in the English hot version? Hot sauce. I remember this hot episode. Hot sauce. Yep. The family hot sauce business. Eat some. Um, this man was chugging hot sauce bottles with the teacher going. Now, even as a kid, I was like, this seems ridiculous. Not, even if this is Japan, no one's just drinking hot sauce off the bottle. <laughs> yeah, no one's just, like, downing hot sauce like that. Um, and so... There is, uh, he comes and he's like, all right, I'll tell you what, if you beat me in a duel, I'll let you stay. Um, and so he says, all right, you're on. And they have the duel. And, uh, he loses <laughs> the duel, yep. but his dad lets him stay anyway. Cause he's like, it seems like you've made good friends and you actually have passion for it again. So yeah, you're good. He listens to his uh, son. He sees that his son is having a good time and he, he lets him go off. So here's my specific notes for it. Let's get into it. Let's go. So I actually really like Hayato's dad. If, you, if you've if you heard me before, I'm a big fan of the muscle man, especially because I love wrestling. So I really like buff characters, <laughs> any form of them, men, women, whatever. I like buff dudes. Uh, when his dad shows up and it's like, oh, it's Hayato's dad. He's like, Hello, I'm here to pick up my son. He's like basically like the deepest voice imaginable. He's like an entire different octave compared to every other character we've seen so far. And he's got crazy <laughs> fucking muscles. He's just so fun. He's like Arnold in Commando when he shows up holding the log <laughs> and a chainsaw in one hand <laughs> and a giant fucking tree log. That's how his father's built. It's so crazy how much muscles this man has. Yeah, his dad is like shredded. Yes. And the father, I like that they actually gave him. The father gives a good reason, which is, I want to take my son out of here. He was held back a year. He's learned nothing. He's done nothing. I need him to go into the family business. It's enough time. And he waited an entire fucking year for his son to show any signs of an improvement, and it didn't work out. You can see there. Like, it, he says it's bad enough that yeah, you're putting they, they phrase it like uh, the dad is, like, in the wrong. Mm -hmm. But, but like... Actually he was pretty understanding yeah he is he's like i think the worst thing you could say is that he felt that it was a little bit like he didn't he he found it as uh disrespectful to be put into slifer red which is the lowest class but he says that's fine that's whatever my sons get put into slifer red fine but it's the fact that it's been an entire year 
He has not improved whatsoever. It seems like he's actively getting worse, and yeah, I'm done. He's literally not doing anything. You are shaming me as a father, and it turns out that his father is actually a world-renowned duelist. So in this world where dueling is absolutely everything and your family has a stake in it, having a son that actually gets put into the lowest bear and that he continuously actively does nothing is actually a kind of bad thing when your father is like known as the uh, one of the best duelists in the entire world. So fair enough yes. point to that. Fair enough. <laughs> Um, Hayato giving his specific, cause, uh, Judai goes up to him and he says, are you really leaving? He's like, yeah, I guess I'm leaving. And then he goes like, you can't, you can't, you can't want to actually leave. And you see that he's been crying. He says, I, I don't want to do, but I, what am I going to do? It's my dad. I, I can't literally fight him. You've seen that man. <laughs> How am I going to stand up to them? He actually also has a legitimate reason to be terrified of his father. Cause his father is fucking massive. <laughs> I wouldn't want to talk yeah, back to him. His father is like a menace. He is. But w- with the help of his friends, he's able to uh, go to the principal and say, listen, uh, his I know his father wants this, but Hayato really doesn't want to go. And so the principal is the one, I think, who tells him, like, you have to duel your dad. No, I think his dad says, if he can beat me in a duel, then we'll do it. And Hayato, without any hint of regret, says, yes, I will du- duel you then. And then they do the reveal from the sensei basically saying that his dad is world-renowned as being able to take dudes down in a single strike with his amazing technique. And you look at... At no point when you look at Hayato, is he has, like, an angry face on him. I actually thought that he was at, angry at Judai at the beginning for helping a degree, but actually, no, he's actually legitimately pumped. And he's not afraid. He's gonna finally duel. He's gonna stay. Um... And I also like when the dad's hanging out with the teacher and he keeps trying to make him drink more and more sake. He had just, like, so much sake. He had, like, apology sake, and then he has, like, uh, let's get drunk sake. He's like, please, no more. It's like, your cat, he's very good at drinking. And he's like, please, his name's not Cat. His name is Pharaoh. <laughs> he's, like, just showing up, <laughs> drinking booze, saying, my son sucks at dueling. I guess I'll duel him and get him out of here. Let's drink up, teach. Let's go. <laughs> So he does all that, and then he actually sees that from... Uh, he hears them cur- preparing uh, Hayato's deck for the next day. Um, and I actually really like it, where he's like t- giving his deck theme. And I we gave Show Deck uh, a uh, bad time for picking a archetype, which is Vehicle Roids, which are very weak. But uh, Hayato has picked a theme, which is just koalas. <laughs> That's literally just koalas, yeah. Just koalas. <laughs> Which is not an actual but, archetype. But he gets fucking Master of Oz eventually. He does. So that's great. Is that the idea of like, here, have Desk Koala because I pulled him and I don't need him. Uh, which is another good sign of showing the friendship. And he goes like, with this, your Koala deck is an Australia deck. And it's like, that has even less support because the desk cards even have less support than that. They, had to, the, the, <laughs> they actually had to give him specific cards of koala themed because there's literally nothing in the actual card game based on that um so i like it when they're building the deck and he gives him master of oz and then he uses master of oz and he fucking punks punches the shit out of um the drunk angel eventually <laughs> so the the thing yes. I really, yes so the thing i really liked about this duel actually is that they did what i wanted them to do with show where Sho had a duel that he could not have won regardless of anything. But in this one, if Hayato had put Deskwalla face down on the first turn, he would have activated his effect. And the effect of Deskwalla is that you take 400 points of damage for each card in the hand, and back in the day, everyone had six. So I've actually used to play Deskwalla. So even if your opponent puts one card in face-up attack mode, they don't put a face down until after the battle phase, and most people don't play equip cards. That's just back in the day. At most, you had to deal with a field spell, or if you're someone like Jaden who uses a bunch of fusion cards. But for the most part, most people in Dual Academy play one card, and if at most, two cards. So if he had attacked the Koala, he would have taken 16 points of damage, and at that point, he would have been able to win with Master of Oz. But they say specifically he hasn't improved, and he put him in attack mode, and that's what actually, at the end of the day, cost him the match, because his father was able to win. And I thought at that moment, that's actually a very good way of showing how he could have improved. Because if he had actually had been paying attention to everything, he would have known to have done that and he would have won. But he didn't, so he still has room to improve. And he still lost because at the end of the day, he wasn't good enough to beat his dad. But then when his dad realizes, well, my son is having a good time, he has friends that he cares about, and I think he actually gives a shit about dueling again, I will 
rescind basically what my feelings are and I'll let my son continue to be basically happy in Duel Academy even if I don't fully even if I think he might actually be a loser and a stain on the family name he's having <laughs> fucking a dweeb menace. fucking dweeb using an Australia deck damn it this boy has friends and he gives a shit that's all I want from my son and if as long as he's doing that I care and that's enough for me. And Hayato is able to be saying to his dad, one day I will beat you. And he has like a tear in his eyes going, dad, thank you so much. And I really liked it because this is actually legitimately the slice of life shit I was talking about. Where Hayato has a problem. He can't stand up to his dad. He needs help with it. He gets help with it. He's still not strong enough, but his dad at least recognizes that he's trying something with his life, which is not what he was doing previously. In the previous episodes, we've seen him do nothing. He was a layabout. He was actually legitimately just a furniture thing. <laughs> he was a fat guy who eventually just wanted food. That's basically all he was. He was telling Sho to do underhanded things, like to leave Judai behind, and now he's changed this much in those many episodes. This is the slice of life shit that I'm looking for. <laughs> this is the kind of thing I want, and this is also a deck which one person is using on Australia deck, and the other one's using drunk-ass people deck. <laughs> yeah, the drunk person deck. The drunk uh, person deck. By the way, I just want to point out that Hayato has grown since he told uh, show to leave Judai behind, but Show has not grown since he not, did leave Judai not behind. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> he's actually taking it to the heart, and he's like, he's regressed. Actually, he's, there's this amazing. There's like a line here where it's like where Hayato starts and where Show starts, and then somewhere up, the, the Hayato stocks are are rising, and the Show stocks are plummeting as we speak. The koala, be, uh, beg, uh, bet big on koala is what I'm saying. So yeah, I really like this episode. I think in terms of episode, I still think the Kaiser one is best. But in terms of shit that I was telling you when I said what I really want from Yu-Gi-Oh! is some slice of life stuff, low stakes. This is basically what I'm talking about with the stuff I want. Where it's like, it's very much character driven, <laughs> the things you want from it. So it ended up actually, I really liked it. And again, I don't really need, and specifically Yu-Gi-Oh!, like, in actual Yu-Gi-Oh!, I don't fight people to the death. In actual Yu-Gi-Oh!, I have a fun-ass time, and I talk to people, and, we, and that was the best parts about it. So the fact that this is a show that's actually legitimately trying to show some of that stuff, and then there's also Slice of Life improvement stuff, is nice, too. So that's how I feel about this episode. Also, this episode was very silly and very dumb, and <laughs> all the good stuff all around it. And then they also start to show off a little bit that Hayato can hear um, the dual spirits. And a show can't, which really shows that it. really the two protagonists here are Hayato and Judai. <laughs> and, sh and shows riding them coattails, <laughs> trying to get into life, <laughs> trying to uh, advance in his life. How do you feel about Zen? That's my specifics on it. Uh, real good episode. I liked it a lot. Uh, it's it's dumb as fuck, but like mm -hmm. in a good way. Because you yeah. can have a dumb as fuck episode, right? Uh, that's good or bad. Mm -hmm. Um. This one was firmly in the good category. Uh, it's fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I love it to fucking pieces. The <laughs> the animation of his dad flipping the table. He's so good. <laughs> and he <laughs> he literally grabs it and just like launches that shit into space. It's this so fucking muscle good. of a man able to destroy everything. <laughs> yeah, so good. It is really good. It was a lot of good bits here, and I like his dad just being this huge. Again, that voice is really funny, too. The, <laughs> the super low. Yeah, the super deep voice. Super, <laughs> yeah, it's it's really good. So, well done on that one. Good on you guys. Now let's talk about this episode, which basically should be a two-parter, so we may as well just talk about it here now. Episodes 10 and 11, Judai and Show Tag Team Duels Part 1 and Part 2. The motherfucking Paradox Brothers. These motherfuckers are back <laughs> with their old ass cards. <laughs> their their tactics have not changed. They're putting Jirai Gumo in attack mode and saying, "Bet, let's go." Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. Um, this is a really funny like double set of episodes. So mm -hmm. they get revealed uh, as, as like the the enemies for Sho and Judai. And Kronos is, like, making it a big deal. Like, oh, these are the legendary duelists who dueled against Yugi and Jonuchi and Duelist Kingdom. Like, they were not, like, assassins. Like, why are they just, like, people that you can go and fucking hire? They were, like, murderers. 
Uh, let me tell you, the PR campaign was heavy for the Paradox <laughs> Brothers. They came out of that undead. The Paradox <laughs> Brothers redemption arc. <laughs> yeah, they came out of the. Uh, the fact that they were going to bury them to death and they were lying actively and the only reason that they didn't die is that Yugi caught on to their lie and they're like, actually, we dueled some of the greatest in the world. Yes, brother, we did. <laughs> they had a fair fight, might I add. And at no point did any other people go, like, Joey didn't step up and Yugi didn't step up to go like, hey, these, these dudes tried to ki- fucking kill us. <laughs> That's not what happened. <laughs> but I guess at that point, they're like, whatever. Whatever is good PR buzz is good for them. They decided to ignore it. Yeah, it's just their fucking PR agents. Like, we got this. It's fine. <laughs> Don't worry. We can spin this good, baby. Yeah, we can spin this. Don't worry. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> you're not canceled or anything. If anything, you're about to enter your second <laughs> phase. Hashtag I stand with the Paradox Brothers. <laughs> oh, God. When the Paradox beat the uh, the murder allegations. <laughs> Hashtag justice for the Paradox Brothers. <laughs> Hashtag greatest uh, tag duelist in the world. <laughs> oh, God. So, uh, yeah, they, the part one of the duel commences. There's a lot of these in, in Yugo GX where mm-hmm. it's like they end at a climactic cliffhanger. Uh, they get out Gate Guardian. They equip it with a piercing card. I think it's Fairy Meteor Crush. It might be it is. Big Bang Shot. I don't remember which one. It is Fairy Meteor um, Crush. And they uh, they are winning. That that it just ends with Gate Guardian, and then being like, "Oh man, how do I beat this Gate Guardian?" Oh no, so strong. Yeah, and then in the second half of the duel, they do some more shenanigans. They pot of greed it up, and then they end up winning by uh, power bond fusing Elemental Hero Tempest with uh, UFO Roid. To create UFO Roid Fighter with 4,000 attack points, uh, doubling it to 8,000, and then they attack and win the duel. And Kronos is fucking pissed off. Yeah, and he's this is, we haven't mentioned it, but Kronos is doing doing a lot of like random Italian. He said Gorgonzola cheese, and he said like mm-hmm. he's been saying all these random Italian things around. So if you assume it was like, oh, is he still doing that? He's still doing that. <laughs> he's still going around going. It doesn't stop. Yeah. Yeah, he's still going around going, pepperoni pizza, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for this one, um, I like the beginning here because they actually, it's been, we haven't had a Manjome uh, focus on anything, but Manjome basically says like, hey, put me in the tag duel against them. Let me, let me beat Judai. Let me show everyone that I can beat them and that it was a fluke basically the last time. Uh, and... Uh, uh, Kronos says, you know, like, it's okay, I've hired the best in terms of what we're doing, and you should really watch out for yourself, because uh, if you keep losing, you're going to be demoted to Slifer, to Slifer Red at this point. And uh, Mount Jomi is just fucking molding for these two episodes. He's, like, actively angry because he says, I've that loss has basically ruined my life. I can't duel correctly. Uh, uh, Kronos has lost yeah, all Yeah, he has, like, me. duelist block. <laughs> He does. He he just like he's nothing is going right for him since he's uh, done this. Um, the tag team starts when the Paradox Brothers and <laughs> when the Paradox Brothers are revealed, they say, "Whoa, it's like a Hong Kong movie," which finally explains why they have such strong like, "Ah, yes, brother, <laughs> let's go." <laughs> In the English, yeah, dubbing. they're like uh, like old like poorly dubbed martial arts movies. <laughs> Yes, they're supposed to, which is actually, I miss that voice in here. I've loved the Paradox Brothers. I know there's probably something problematic to be found there, but the fact that the Paradox Brothers was like, ah, yes, we will beat you, uh, we will beat the, uh, fuck, what's a rhyme? Give me a quick rhyme that the Paradox Brothers would say. Oh, God, I don't know. Uh, the, the, like, for example, they would show up because like, ah, yes, me and my brother will put you to the test. And then the other one goes, and you will die just like the rest. <laughs> they're like the yeah. most... <laughs> And they would constantly rhyme at everything they're doing. It's like... Uh, it's amazing. I love the Paradox Brothers. I talk a lot of shit on the Paradox Brothers because the Gate Guardian is perhaps one of the worst monsters to ever be released in Yu-Gi-Oh! If I specifically said... If we talk, if I talk shit about VWXYZ Dragon Cannon being super minus, this card, the amount of Yeah, Gate hopes, Guardian is like fucking atrocious it's yes. so bad in had, like so many ways they had to use so many cards 
to summon Gate Guardian. Because back in the day, when they first did their original duel, they could play whatever fucking monster they wanted. And it's like, ah, oh, yes, three turns, brother, and we can summon the Gate Guardian. Yes, we will. But this time, they have to actually by play by the rules. So they have to sacrifice... Yeah, they two- can't just, like, drop Sangha, Suijin, and Kazujin in one <laughs> no. turn. So they had to do this big... They had to summon, like, Jirai Gumo in attack mode and use Tribute Doll and Tribute It. Use Tribute Doll with their monsters to summon the other Kazujin. Do this. And then uh, they had to use, they had to bring out a card that specifically says if it's tributed for a light monster, it's two tributes to summon um, the Lightning Head. And then... All three of those monsters are better individually because they all have effects, which their effect is really good, which is that they can drop a monster yeah, they have a good down effect. to zero attack, which is fucking actually busted if you try and attack with it. Because I want, I don't, I don't think it's like once, it is once per turn, but you can keep doing it, right? And you can do it on either turn. I think is the way that their effects work. But either way, it's a really good effect. Uh, but Gate Guardian's effect is is that it can only be summoned through sacrificing those three monsters, and that's it. And then its actual effect is I have 3,750 attack. That's it. And <laughs> that's it. So they go, they had to sacrifice at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like close to like eight cards for a th- over 3,000 attack beat stick that doesn't really do much and doesn't even have piercing. They had to give it piercing. <laughs> yeah, they had to put fucking Fairy Meteor Crush on. Like... Yes. <laughs> it's so Garbage. crazy garbage such a garbage card and it's so funny because they'll go out of their way to make like for example um uh with Hayato and his koalas they gave him a card specifically that's like hey uh special summon a koala a beast monster in your graveyard and if it have if you have a beast of a similar name or something like that you can basically summon them but basically a card that's basically like would be busted in any other game where it's like you get to summon a beast monster in your hand and then I get to just summon another beast monster another monster of the same type in there and then you just get them both in attack mode, and then you can do whatever with them. They gave him that card specifically because his archetype is not the greatest. With Gate Guardian, they just gave him a shit ton of cards, and they refused to make anything to make Gate Guardian summoning easy. They wanted this to be the world's hardest summon in the world. And when Gate Guardian does eventually get destroyed, they get a new form of the Gate Guardian. But his he also sucks, because his new ability is, I can't be destroyed by battle. And that's it. That's yep. the only thing he it's has. It's fucking terrible. Um, but yeah, the, the duel itself, it was actually super fun to look at it, uh, show constantly fucking fucking up left and right. He's still not paying attention. He's still like using mystical space typhoon. Like actually funny enough, this is another case of show gets shit on for doing the right move. He gets, uh, he uses mystical space typhoon to destroy the fairy meteor crush, but then he gets hit by curse of Anubis, which has the very specific effect that if you try and destroy a card, a uh, spell or trap card, it's a counter trap. You use it, and then you destroy the monster with the highest attack, and then you uh, inflict damage, which is what destroys Rampart Blaster when it shows up. <laughs> That's how it gets destroyed in that case. Uh, so he gets shit on for doing basically the right move. Anyone else would have basically done the same thing if they had the same cards, but for some reason we show it specifically like, idiot, dumbass, <laughs> look what, you, what you've done. You're garbage at the game. <laughs> yeah. I, I like how they make, like, a big deal about the fact that he can use Power Bond, and he's, like, conquered his PTSD. Yeah, and his brother's looking on, and he gives him, like, a, like a th- not, like, a thumbs up, but he gives him, like, a knowing glance, like, ah, yes. You've learned some kind of lesson that I've tried to hypnotically teach you through body language only. <laughs> uh, and also, I like that show is so terrible that um, he doesn't pick up on the fact that um, so the way they win with UFO Red Fighter is that he attacks with UFO Red Fighter when he has like 8,000 attack because of Power Bond. And he's able to beat them because it's like, ah, uh, they can't be destroyed by battle, but they still take battle damage. Ah, oh, oh my god, even if something's not destroyed, you can still take damage from it. That's the big lesson that he has to learn. Um, and Jaden has to basically teach him that by hitting him and sacrificing one of his cards. He doesn't outright tell him, though. He wants him to learn it. So he stakes his entire career on this fucking... On show, picking up the fact that you can still inflict damage even though a card's not destroyed by battle. And I had to pause the video and go, wait, he doesn't know that? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of show's whole thing. Is like, yeah. he's just irrelevant. 
He just doesn't know it. So I was like, so that means if he he didn't do this giant pomp and circumstance where he's basically like, ah, oh, pay attention, show. And show's like, what are you doing? Huh? What? Huh? Oh, you want me to attack? And he does yeah, he's like, oh, okay. And they're like, are you fucking serious? And I remember there being a lot of comments from the crowd, like, actively shitting on him. Yeah, they are shitting on him. And also, the crowd shots are hilarious, because there's one point where they're just, like, little uh, blobs on the, <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> they're not, like, actual, like, people, because usually they're actual little people. And funny enough, like, for how uh, hype the idea of Paradox Brothers are there, the stadium seats are not filled. No kid, no, not a whole bunch of kids decided to show up to watch these two kids get expelled. Potentially, <laughs> it's actually it's, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, they were all like, "Don't you think it's weird that we're gonna go watch a bunch of murderers duel students in our school?" <laughs> well, yeah, it's true. Maybe some of them were can't uh, uh, <laughs> trying to cancel the Paradox Brothers for their previous murder attempts, <laughs> so they didn't show up <laughs> to their special. <laughs> Hashtag Paradox Brothers are over party. They walked out. That would have been even funnier. It's like, oh, I can't believe <laughs> they treat him like they treat Dave Chappelle. Uh, I didn't know that they would be here. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Kronos. <laughs> I didn't know I would be in the presence of actual murderers. First of all, the allegations were wrong. <laughs> if you only un- you were not there on the island. <laughs> Do not approach us like you were there. Please stop fighting with the children. <laughs> Please go fight these children. Okay, well then we murder them at the end. No, don't murder the kids. Don't murder. Simply, that's actually the thing I want to see. Where Kronos is telling him specifically, like he's on the phone saying, like, uh, uh, da, 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 da. "Hello, everyone. Is this the famous Paradox Brothers? I want you to duel. I hear you're the, some of the greatest at tag dueling. I want you to fight these two kids." And then the other one goes like, "Ah, yes, duel." So we murder them at the end, right? No. <laughs> when do we kill the children? I'm thinking that we put a rock on top of their heads, and when we win the game, it falls on their heads. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I, I, I just watch you for your dueling expertise, and not for them killing them. No, we don't need to kill them. Here's our plan, okay? Here, here's some feedback. We, we put them in a labyrinth. <laughs> And we tell him that one of us is telling the truth, <laughs> and the other one is lying. Go with it. This, I know my brother's talking crazy, but it's good. <laughs> and then we have it so even if they win the game, they have to decide which was right. Oh, this is good. This is the good part. It turns out we're both lying. <laughs> they will die regardless. No, I just, please. Yeah, they're like not really. We don't. We don't need that. Please, just, thank you. Just the duels, paradox brothers. Okay, we can do that. And then he hangs up the phone and they go, shit, we have to figure out a way to actually summon Gate Guardian. Yeah, they're like, shit, there's rules now. <laughs> yeah, there's rules. Ah, damn it. And then they had to carry this entire deck based around summoning Gate Guardian. That's the theme. <laughs> That's the slice of life I want to see. The, the Paradox Brothers' life afterwards trying to... At every given point, they're hired at, like, kids' parties to, like, entertain them with tag dueling, and they have to fight the urge to kill the kids that they're dueling. So, yeah, this was a pretty good episode. I liked it. I The, the reveal of UFO Roid Fighter, I forgot how silly he looked. Because if you don't know... Yeah, where he's literally just Elemental Hero Tempest standing on UFO Roid's back. Yes, but the, the, the part of UFO Roid where he's like a cute vehicle Roid is gone and he's just like standing on like, it looks like a giant mobile, like a flying Segway. It looks so Doesn't silly. Doesn't that handlebars too? Yes, it does have handlebars and everything. Yeah. So I really like that. I like the the dueling thing between them. I think it was a very good back and forth duel. They were basically losing the entire time, but then he eventually learns it. The only thing I wish is that the show had didn't have to learn such an obvious lesson. <laughs> the fact that his entire thing was that he would not have attacked them. He would never even put two and two together that they could have won. Like, I don't know. It makes him seem like he's just a big dumbass. But I also like Tempest. I like Tempest as a card. It's a shame Tempest's effect is not better. Yeah, you know, Tempest kind of sucks. Yeah, It's Tempest, a lot for, too much. for that shit. He's Sparkman, Avion, and Bubbleman, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's the actual good, the one good Bubble Man is Tempest. 
but really it's the other two pulling. Still together. not that good. <laughs> no, and honestly, he would be better if they removed uh, Bubble Man and they made it so it was just Sparkman and Avion. <laughs> that would be even stronger. He would yeah. be. He'd be ten times better as that. So, good episode. Uh, it was a good way of kind of uh, closing the book on this one. Obviously, there's going to be more show later. <laughs> there will be more show to show, but we will save that for next time. So next, next week. More we'll, oh yeah, show actually, to show. I, did, I didn't even ask you. How'd you like this episode? <laughs> before I forget, it's good. I, was... I like this duel. It's like uh, what's a good word for it? It's another duel. It's like stupid but in a fun way it's like this is fucking ridiculous but i like it you know yeah it's it's, kinda, it's very GX similar season to... one really toes that line of like it it could be really stupid and sometimes it is but sometimes it fixes it like it it hits just right and it's, this it, is one of those ones that hit just right yeah it's actually kind of similar to the actual season one of Yu-Gi-Oh, which is the one that everyone hates which is duelist kingdom uh, except for they obey the rules, where a lot of the duels are just fun regardless. Like, the idea of, like, yeah, the Mako and uh, Yugi duel is silly and dumb and he attacks the moon, but it's entertaining, which is the part that's important, <laughs> really, for most of it. And there's some, and actually it's very similar to when Paradox Brothers first show up, is that they're like, oh yeah, here's this two Hong Kong rejects, and they show up and they go, ha 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 ha, let us duel, brother, and let us go. And then they just get smoked and <laughs> it's perfectly fine you get to see the two um main heroes basically kind of interact and actually ends the same way they lose the exact same way which is the fusion of uh two of the main heroes cards into one big one which is uh-huh. i think how most tag duels end isn't it isn't that the same way it ended when they do it against generally the, yeah the big uh, five because you know it's a big deal about like unity yeah yeah the big five lose to dark flare knight Yes. Which is Flame Swordsman and Dark Magician. Yeah. Which is uh, yeah. and then someone I don't remember who. Uh, the they make world. Dragon Master Knight with Kaiba and Yugi. At it's one in point. it's in the virtual world. It wasn't actually a legit duel. It was when they fight the five headed dragon, right? That's right, yeah. yeah. And they make Dragon Master Knight. Yeah, that's that's also silly, but <laughs> there's something enjoyable yes. to it. <laughs> so yeah, some good stuff. Other than uh, show somehow being the weakest, I'm still interested in everyone else and seeing what their whole deal is. I like Kaiser. I still like Asuka doing her mysterious looking for my brother thing in the background, which is what she's just kind of been wandering around. I like that she just uh, wanders around the school at night looking for him and then shows up at, with Zane, who's looking at a lighthouse, who's just like, hmm, yes. The lighthouse. <laughs> it gives me calmness. It makes me happy. Never says it, but the man feels calm when he's by the lighthouse. Oh. <laughs> at peace. Yeah, he His inner at peace. peace is at that lighthouse. Exactly. And when he gets away from the lighthouse, who knows what happens to him. We will have to see it eventually. But yeah, good for this week. Next week we will be watching. And now, funny enough, Avion avoids the... Fuck, uh, he, he saw that I was making the rocked counter. And he, he fucking ran away, because after episode 8, he doesn't get summoned. Because in episode 9, uh, uh, it's Hayato, he shows up there. And then in 10 and 11, he never gets put in attack mode to attack. I think Sparkman actually is the one that gets uh, destroyed in that one, um, if I'm remembering correctly. But we'll talk about more Yu-Gi-Oh! GX next week, because next week we're going to be going through episodes 11, 12... Uh, the, let me see, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, am I giving my number right? 11, be... no, no, well, I'm, I'm, well, I'm done, 11 12, was part of 13, the duplicate, yeah. 14, 15, there we go, we'll be going through those, <laughs> yep. and that way we'll be at 5 perfectly, and if we ever get into another two-parter, I think from this point on, all the two-parters end at the end of the fifth one, so... Will be good, but if at any point there's another part that ends, enters the other one, then we will gladly um, talk about that one. No no issues on that one, but yeah. Look forward to next episode where we'll see the continuing drop of the Manjome stocks as he loses to Bastion. Yeah, the Manjome stocks plummeting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll actually keep another on the side. We'll keep stock value. So current stock value's up. I think Judai stock's up. <laughs> A big Oscar stocks off Kaiser stock all time high. Hayato respectful small climb, and then we have Manjome down and Show way down. <laughs> yeah, Show has plummeted. 
show is absolutely plummeting. And funny enough, Hayato's dad, very high up there for a one-note character that will not show up again. He's just baseline stocks. Yeah, he never shows up again. That's a shame. He he leaves on a high note. He did exactly. He leaves not high, but extremely drunk off his ass. <laughs> the way he entered drunk and he left drunk, just, just like our hearts. He entered our hearts drunk and he left it drunk. <laughs> but yeah, we will see you all next week with more Yu Gi Oh GX. Until next time, everyone. You guys have a good day. Peace out. See you later. Bye bye.